my victim. everybody welcome back to mask of the slasher we are at episode 19 and this one is about um, the original Candyman and the newest Candyman movie um, Candyman is near and dear to my heart it is the third on my list of um, my top five favorite horror movies and uh, that is because I saw it when it came out not immediately it came out in 1992 on October 16th but I probably didn't see it until December when it came to the discount theaters because we were poor <laughs> So, um, and I'd rather spend money on popcorn. Oh, there you go. It's just, you know, yeah. it's just facts. Yeah, I Back saw it with my mom and, yeah. um, you know, not to say too much about it, but I was totally shocked by it at that time because it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. That's how I felt about it, too. Um, oh. I hadn't seen a horror movie that was based around somebody of color mm -hmm. and something that was so realistic yes not his urban legend per se but the living conditions right um it was something that i hadn't been exposed to yet we were both in junior high school when this happened when mm -hmm. this movie came out right so um i didn't know much about it i was in california i was used to crime so on and so forth right but i didn't know what cabrini green was yeah but you did. Right, yeah. I mean, it was infamous to the point where even in Iowa, we had heard about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. And if you don't know what Cabrini Green is, that is where this movie takes place, essentially. Right. Um, the story goes um, that two students, two graduate students of University of Illinois, um, Helen and Bernadette, are doing their thesis on urban legends. They decided to focus on the urban legends of Cabrini Green, which was a housing development. They decided to go there and do their study, and they start to learn about the urban legend of Candyman. But she doesn't, they don't learn that the real story until a little bit further on into the movie. Uh -huh. um, but where it kind of starts for them is that they hear from one of the janitorial workers at the college about the story of Ruthie Jean. And she was one of the residents at one of the buildings, one of the many buildings. Um, and she had said that somebody was coming through her walls. She had called the police over and over again. Nobody came. And ultimately it was Candyman who right. he would come through the mirror in the bathroom. And it's because they are connected back to back in these buildings. And he came through and, and he murdered her. Um, it's it's pretty horrible. Yeah. So they 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 went to Cabrini Green, which, of course, very hesitant. They start learning more about the story, and um, they go into where Ruthie Jean was killed into her apartment, and they see that if you go through the mirror, that there on the other side is basically just another apartment that's in ruins or whatever. But there is graffiti, which there is all over this building, but there is graffiti that is more based on Candyman mm -hmm. itself. In all of their studies and everything, they do learn the story of Candyman. So I do want to talk about it. Right. Um, it's not a great story. It's not, it's not nice to hear. But it is, in fact, the backstory to Candyman. And it makes you understand a little bit more as to why things are happening. Right. Candyman was an artist. He did do paintings and portraits back in the 1890s. Um, and he was hired by a rich man to paint his daughter's portrait. His daughter and Candyman fell in love. She got pregnant. The townspeople weren't thrilled about it. The rich man wasn't thrilled about it. So they chased him down. Uh, smeared his body with honey and let the bees attack him, cut off his right uh, hand and shoved a hook in it, and then burned him alive and scattered his ashes on Cabrini Green. Now, Cabrini Green, that name was not actually in existence back in the right, 1890s. Right. That was actually the developers of those buildings. Mm -hmm. um, but that's essentially where it was. Right. So his spirit has stayed in that area. Right. But she's discovering more and more about this. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, at some point, she essentially snaps. Right. Um, you don't know that at first, but she does. She snaps and she starts getting accused of a murder, um, which was pretty horrible. Yeah. Uh, 
heads up, a dog gets beheaded. Right. And you don't see it happen, but you see the aftermath, yeah, the aftermath, of, aftermath of, it. of it. Yeah. And it's so sad. Mm -hmm. And it really bothered me. Um, but the woman that owned the dog that was beheaded, she had a baby and that baby disappeared. Right. And all of this. And they thought that Helen had either killed the baby or I don't know, hit it somewhere. Right. And it was so it was him that took the baby. It was him that killed the dog. It's him that just keeps killing these things, but it's always looks like it's her. Right. Um, and towards the end of this movie, it does say, you know, it was always you, Helen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, I'm very torn on this mm -hmm. subject because, okay, so she could have snapped and she's just hearing these things and seeing these things. Right. And the urban legend has just weaseled its way into her brain. Mm -hmm. And so that's she's upset because her shitty husband is cheating on her with students right. and because he's a professor at the same college. Right. You know, who knows with that? Yeah, right. But ultimately, Candyman is a real thing. Right. Like every time he killed, it, it made him stronger right. and kept his, his story alive right. and all right. of that. I think that's kind of how I felt about it. It is all about the power of belief. Mm -hmm. And it's spreading, you know. Yeah. The more it spreads, the more powerful he gets, the more he, that he's able to do, you know. Exactly. The story definitely um, between the, the history of Cabrini Green and the fact that Candyman is somebody of color and the fact that Cabrini Green is a real place and the history of racism in America and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a heavy story. It is super heavy. And yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there's, there hasn't been anything like it before or since, in my opinion. I no. Mean, we, I mean, yes, obviously we can talk about, and we're going to talk about the 2021 yeah. version. Um, but I mean, obviously, uh, the original is, sorry, the original <laughs> is so original, if you know what I mean. It's the OG. <laughs> yeah. It's the OG, I mean, yeah. as far as just everything about it, it's just so different from anything that was out there. And it, it's, yeah, like you said, there's never been anything like it since. Even the newer Candyman is not like the original. Right. Um, it continues the story, and there's some aspects of it that carry into the newer one. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same. It's not a remake. Yeah. And those two um, sequels that came after the original Candyman, don't bother. I have never seen... I've watched them each once. Either of them. <laughs> I can't even. I don't. I can't even have the words for it. They're so bad. Really, that's why the newer one succeeds. I think is because it's a direct sequel to that first one. It ignores those other two. Yes. And while it is different, it is in that same vein and can very much continues that original story. Yeah. It's not trying to be something different or take place in somewhere else or, you know, anything like that. It's yeah. very much still rooted in that source material, even if it does kind of go off onto its own thing. That's what made it so good was yeah. that it had heart behind it. It um, it was, like I said, realistic. Yeah. I mean, you could call it a slasher, I suppose. I suppose very generally, but it's so much more than that. And the violence is just so visceral in that first, well, in the second one too, but, yeah. but in the first one, especially, it just felt Back so then. violent, like yeah. just so, uh, you just felt the rage behind the violence in that one, I think. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, when Candyman uses that hook, he even says it in a poetic way. It, something about you know splitting you from your groin to your gullet yeah and it, he's really doing that yeah. he just hooks that bastard right in there yeah. just Ugh. but yeah. it's not like some smooth little wee yeah it's it, it, it's it's oh shit uh, I spill my water it's super it, gnarly it's jerky yeah and it's realistic what you would expect it to be in yes. real life exactly yeah they did. oh my god it was so good and there was back then there's no cgi yeah there was it was all practical. Mm -hmm. um, even the bees in this in the first movie are right. absolutely real, and um, it is told that he made a deal that he would definitely leave those bees in his mouth, but for every sting he got a thousand dollars. And 
I'm like, holy shit, you know. Yeah. I mean, and Virginia Madsen had to be a part of that yeah. too, you know. That's just Tony bananas. Todd goes hard, man. <laughs> he did. He went hard. He went hard. By the way, nicest man. Well, yeah, and so what a nice yeah, man. and what a fantastic performance. It was. You know, because there again, I mean, so much personality in that mm -hmm. character. It's not just a Michael Myers or a Jason. No. You know, it's just so much thought and so much, as you said, so much heart. Mm -hmm. and everything and so visceral and such a wonderful performance from him i mean that's another thing that just made that movie stand out so much from anything else that was out there well and i think that the sound editing that was done like you said with like the anytime he, somebody was being gutted or anything mm. it sounded gross yeah, and it, it sounded, sounded real horrible, yeah. um it sounded like it was getting caught on their spine and their yeah. ribs mm -hmm. and the yeah. whole thing and it was just like oh my god um, but also he has this voice. I mean, obviously he has a very deep voice as is, Yes. but when you, when she first witness or runs into him essentially uh -huh. in the garage, yeah. he is so far away from her, uh -huh. but sounds like he's right there in stereo around yeah. her head. I am the writing on the wall, the whisper in the classroom. And it, that's part of the trance. It just engulfs her. Uh -huh. And it's just such a eerie way to do it. But the other part of this movie, and you guys have known that I, I like the musical scores of things and that, is um, the composer for the original movie is Philip Glass. And some people know who Philip Glass is. Some people don't. Um, and we're going to insert a little piece right here mm -hmm. for you to see where I know him from. Um, it was Sesame Street, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they did this, you know, they had segments on Sesame Street, and one of the segments was just shapes. And the, sa the music that they used for it is very eerie. So when... I watched Candyman for the first time. I was like, gosh, this sounds so familiar. But back then, once again, I didn't have access to find out who that was or right. really put those puzzle pieces together until much later on in life. And I learned it was Philip Glass and it was the same guy who did the Sesame Street thing. And I'm like, holy shit, right. you know? And that, so that music is eerie. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's somewhat jarring, mm -hmm. um, but it goes so well. Mm -hmm. It goes very, very well. Fast forward to 2021, Nia DaCosta was the director of the newest version, the sequel in a sense. Yeah. Um, thankfully, they didn't go corny and go Candyman 2 or yeah. <laughs> Candyman the Continuance or something stupid, you know? It yeah. just, you know, they just left it as his. Yeah. Um, this movie was part of uh, Monkey Paw Studios, which was Jordan Peele's production company. And so he did have part in this. And I knew that they were going to fill in some blanks. Right. Which, as we've discussed, sometimes it's annoying. This time it was great. Oh, yeah. Um, they didn't they didn't mess it all up by doing it. Right. You know, they they told the correct story. Yeah. Yeah. They build they built upon the mythology. Yes. Of Candyman, essentially. Is exactly. What, is what happened there. Yeah. And very much took it even deeper as far as exploring how that that legend or that myth kind of continued to perpetuate mm -hmm. itself throughout the years you know which i thought was really cool yes and the story starts with an artist um his name is anthony um and anthony is a struggling artist as most are a painter they happen to live in cabrini green now as i said before these projects did exist at one point um, and they were actually torn down between the years of 2000 and 2011, the, the 26 buildings that were erected. But the row houses that they used in this movie were still standing at the time that this was filmed. So it was important. You kind of have to put the puzzle pieces together. I didn't get it originally because it's just, it was so much to see in the uh -huh. beginning. But the, Anthony was the baby that was abducted uh -huh. in the original movie. Right. So... But at the very, very tippy top of this movie, um, something I did notice and I thought was really interesting is that at the beginning of the original movie, it's an overhead shot of the city where you're just seeing the top of the city. But on this one, it was 
from the ground looking yeah, it's up. Yeah, flipped upside down. Yeah. Yes. And I thought that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just a tiny detail I thought was really cool. But the story starts with, uh, with Billy, who is a boy who is sent, he's living in Cabrini Green. He's sent over to one of the bigger buildings to go do laundry. And he is confronted by a man, um, I think his name is Sherman. Yeah. And he was essentially the candy man of his time. Um, everybody thought that he was this horrible child killer, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, he wasn't. Right. Um, he was just something, somebody who had um, just a mental disability of some sort. And he was actually just the nice guy that smiles and hands out candy, but he happened to have a hook. Right. And that was, it was sad. But there was something about candy having a uh, razor blade, blade in it, yeah. which is an urban legend that we used to hear when we were kids. Right. And the excuse that my father used every Halloween to test my candy oh, and make yeah. sure everything was safe. <laughs> well, there are actually places that would x-ray candy oh, really? in <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. Well, Iowa's a little ridiculous yeah. with Halloween. So yes. back to this whole thing um, with Anthony. Him and his girlfriend um, are having dinner with her brother and his boyfriend. And they're discussing the apartment and how expensive it was and how it is, in fact, built in Cabrini Green and how it's supposedly a haunted area. And the brother tells the story about Helen Lyle, Helen from the original movie. Right. And it is comical. Yeah. He's a great... <laughs> his performance in that movie is so fantastic. It is, because he brings the so humor funny. to yeah, it. Yeah, he brings that levity to it. And because there isn't any humor in the original no, movie at all. no. Um, but they definitely brought it into this, and I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but what ultimately happened is that when he's telling Helen's story, he is, in fact, bringing that urban legend again yeah. in the most ridiculous manner where mm. it gets blown out of proportion and the details. He talks about how she's doing snow angels mm. and the blood right, of right. the dog head and then yeah. the... Yeah, I mean, and oh that's the thing about these stories is that it's kind of like, you know, you play the telephone game when you're that's a kid. That's exactly it. Or you whisper, you know, down the line and then see what the person, at the, see the difference between what the per first person said and what the last person gets, you know. Yes. And that's kind of the same thing here. That's exactly it. It, it it's, it's really stupid is what happens. <laughs> I mean, the same thing with like Bloody Mary and all that right. other stuff. Because Anthony is struggling, he's trying to come up with a new project. Um he finds interest in this Helen Lyle story because he's hmm. like, this is kind of bananas, you know, right. and how believing, yeah. believable is it? It should be noted that he doesn't know that he's the no, baby. No, he does not know any of this stuff. It, it, we, when, when it starts out. Yeah, we kind of know yeah. if you know the story well enough and if you paid attention, but even I know the story well enough and I didn't catch it first. Right. I was probably eating popcorn, <laughs> more than likely. Um, but anyway, so he starts to show interest in the, in the story. And um, he goes to the projects portion, the row houses that still stood. And he's just taking pictures and taking pictures of the graffiti and that kind of thing. And he gets stung by a bee. And as you, I might have mentioned, obviously, at the beginning that uh, Candyman, the original, he is basically stung to stung death. Stung to death by bees, right? Yeah. So a bee is... It's a constant theme in, in the second movie, which mm. I thought was great yeah. that they actually used that um, because there's a lot of references like the hive mm -hmm. and the swarm yeah. and things like that. And um, when they talk about how like Sherman, when he was caught by the police, it was a swarm mm. of police. Yeah. And they just, they kind of intermingle all this bee stuff, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. and it, it really makes sense. And it's not just some corny, clever thing to do. Right, right. It was a really good use of the, the terminology. Yeah. As he goes on with this project, he starts slowly going mad. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this bee sting. Oof, yeah. Oh my God. It's so <laughs> gross. Yeah. And I'm allergic to bee stings, not like deadly, but pretty severely allergic to bee stings. So I'm like, go to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't. Right. He's just so involved in these paintings and right. this art that he's just, 
it's just like what else and that's yeah i was gonna say that's the uh that's the other theme i've noticed that goes you know it's kind of one of the through lines between these two movies is just the nature of obsession yeah you know and what the downfall the being a, getting so wrapped up in something can actually be exactly he continues on with his project he used a um a vanity mirror which as we've said in the original that's how can you what he does is he yeah. comes through the mirror because right. you repeat his, his name, name five times don't do it yeah. <laughs> i won't do it so and i know that's dumb right. but i just won't do it um and so they use that mirror and they call that art piece say my name uh-huh. And that is significant at the time that this movie came out because of George Floyd and all of those things that I won't go into right. because I don't feel like I have the, I don't, it's not my place to talk about it. Right. He does this whole thing and it says in the description for these people that, you know, these snooty art gallery folk, mm-hmm. ugh, uh, you know, to go and you, you say, you know, Candyman's name five times in this mirror. And it's like, oh, just, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Anytime somebody does it, it's like, stop. Right. Just Let's just not do this. But these two do it at the end. They're Not only that, but they decide to do kinky, sexy stuff and say his name at the same time. Right. Now, what was interesting about this, because of course... He comes in and he, he's gonna he's gonna murder some folks. Right. These two dum dums. Mm-hmm. But you don't really see him. He's right. only in the shadows. It's not like the original where it's like, here he is. Yeah, you kind of see like reflections and shadows and just kind of exactly. hints of him. It could be just because it's not when you find out at the end of the story that it's not a specific person. Yeah. It's the ongoing um accusatory way that the police mm-hmm. you know put this on folks of color and so it makes it to where there's no face to it mm-hmm. essentially and um you don't you don't figure that out till the end right but that's what i got from it yeah anthony visits the critic's house who was, was kind of a bitch yeah, at the beginning of bitch, this yeah. <laughs> until uh these people get killed in the yeah, gallery the gallery owner and his assistant that got killed there yes now, I don't know if you caught on to this, but when he saw, when Anthony saw the thing on the news about it, and they decided to mention the name of the art piece mm-hmm. and who did it, yeah. he said, they said my name. Mm-hmm. Just like the art piece is called Say My Name. I yeah. thought that was interesting. So Anthony goes to the critic's house and for a small interview or whatever, and she decides she had to go to the bathroom or something and he was like oh you should you know say his name and whatever Mm. i don't think she ever did yeah because they never show it and you'd think that they would show it if she had yeah but but the fact that anthony sees him in the mirror then i know uh, but it's not that's the funny part it's not actually candy man he sees in the mirror he sees sherman who was not candy man but he sees him because he was still considered the candy man for that time that time frame yeah so he sees himself as sherman yeah as in basically passing the torch right which is the shit part of course right um but i thought that that was fascinating how they did that mm-hmm. um because it wasn't just some little glimpse of something another big part of this story is brianna his girlfriend um she had her own tragic story where when she was a child her father had also been driven mad by his art and he unfortunately committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, so she unfortunately is now once again, finding people dead in the gallery and is confronted by all of this stuff, which I thought was just horrible. They don't really go into his story very much, the Mm -mm. father, but if you watch the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray, um, they do expand on it a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, you see a little more of that scene. Which I thought they should have left it in. Yeah. Because I thought it was actually kind of important. Like I mentioned, there was uh, high school students, and they decided to do this also in the mirror at school. And um, they thankfully didn't show everything. Right. You know, which was good. Because... Uh, 
Yeah. That was rough. Mm -hmm. You know, that was rough. And the fact that the one girl was left behind, but they never go back to that either. Right. Um, which kind of disappointed me mm -hmm. because I kind of wanted to see what happened. Like, did that girl get accused of something right. or is she just going to be traumatized for life? Yeah, now I think it was kind of one of those things where leave one person alive to tell the story, you know. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that was my thought on it. But, yeah. You know. But also this chick puts lipstick on and then kisses the mirror. <laughs> and all I can think about is all the poo particles in the bathroom. <laughs> Great. And that's just nasty. That's just don't kiss mirrors. Yeah, no. I Ugh, just not public ones for sure. Yeah, especially not oh. high school bathrooms. Oh god. But in the bathroom, which I also wish they had actually shown, but it was written in blood, say my name. Mm. And it's like it's such a quick little thing that I had never caught it until, of course, I'm sitting there picking apart this movie. Right. And I just thought that that was kind of cool and important, you mm -hmm. know, that it still carried on. And the girls that decided to do the Candyman stuff, she was actually at the art show. Right. Like I said, he uh, Anthony did finally go to the hospital to get his hand looked at. And um, the, uh, the hospital, the nurse said something along the lines of, welcome back or something, mm. you know. And he was like, what do you mean? She was like, well, you were born here. I was like, no, no, I was born on the south side. And she was like, nope. You were born here. And he's just like, ah, uh, okay. So he, um, he learns essentially that he is the Anthony. Right. Um, and he goes back and this is, I love the fact that they brought Anne Marie back into mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, it was so important. One, because Vanessa Williams did a great job in the original movie. Yes. Um, very convincing, it was not all gussied up or anything like that, which we were definitely guilty of back in the 90s doing that, despite how grotesque the movie might have been. Mm -hmm. She makes another appearance, and I was just like, this is fabulous. But he learns even more so that um, he is, in fact, Anthony, and he's very upset because he's fallen into crazy. Mm -hmm. This bee sting thing has spread up his oh, arm yeah. on his neck now. Yeah. And it's just starting to take over him. At this point, uh, Brianna's trying to find Anthony. And she finds this pen that he had. And it was a laundromat. She goes to this laundromat. And it, that's where Billy is, the boy from the original scene. Which I thought was a little funny. Yeah. You know, that... Here he had this traumatic experience in the laundromat in his building, mm -hmm. and now he runs a laundromat. Right, right. But he had some major PTSD. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And we learn why. They do a little flashback, and he just wants to play with his sister. And his sister's older, and she's like, no, I don't want to play with you. You can hear her and her friend in there calling Candyman. Mm -hmm. And they thank God, once again, don't show it. But yeah. she is, in fact, killed, and right. it's... Sherman is the face that he sees in the room, mm -hmm. even though it's not actually Sherman. But it is. I mean, I think that's kind of the thing is that each one, Daniel Robitaille, Sherman, Anthony, they're all Candyman for well, their time, all Candyman, for that time and place. But I'm not, what I'm saying is that it's not, he didn't actually do the killing. It's who they think is Candyman because that's what uh, the urban legend is telling them. And you find this out at the end as the bees clear off of uh, Anthony's face mm -hmm. and you see the original Candyman's face. Yeah. So it really was the original all this time. But because he was traumatized by that man mm -hmm. in the laundry room when he was a kid, then that's how he's always going to see mm -hmm. the bad guy. Okay. This is the part I didn't care for. I, I really love this movie. Mm -hmm. But the ending of this movie was disappointing. Uh, Anthony is now under this major trance and he is in this church that he saw when he was taking pictures of a Caprini Green area. And Billy has just, he's he's gone off yeah. the deep end. I mean, he already was, he just hit it well. Right. Um, and it's from that, that PTSD from his sister and uh, from Sherman and all that stuff. So um but he just kind of goes off this whole crazy tangent thing and he has brianna he knocked her out and mm. brought her to the church and 
is just kind of going, oh, I'm the crazy guy and I'm going to continue the story and right. how perfect is this that it actually is Anthony and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And this is what was supposed to happen. And then he goes and like cuts off his hand and puts the hook in there. Right. And it just, I don't know. I think it was kind of weak sauce. Mm. Um, I still think they could have brought Billy in for this in somehow or another, but just not how they did it. Yeah. I just felt like it was an easy out mm. um, for that portion of it. Yeah. Um, they escape and they end up in the same house that Billy grew up in. Also a little too perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and Brianna stabs Billy to death in the eye with the pen from right. the laundromat little too perfect once again um there were some little hints there though i saw, thought was cool like in the shadow of the flashing of the police car you see the image of candy man in mm. it and it's just so quick but yeah. so you just kind of have to pay attention to those little details she gets arrested put in the back of the police car because the police end up shooting anthony right and he's just like, okay, this is what we're going to say, right? Yeah. And just kind of coercing the whole situation. Well, yeah, basically, you can get off or you can be in a, or you can be charged as an accomplice if you don't go along with what we say. Exactly. He's like, all right, all right, you know, I'll go along with your story, but I need to see the mirror. And she calls Candyman, and it is Anthony. Right. And um, he kills the cops that are outside. And he ends up killing the cop that's inside and unlocking the car so she can get out. But that's when she sees um, him with the bees all over him. Right. And the bees clear. Mm -hmm. And then you see the original Candyman's face. Right. And man, that's some CGI because he is not that yeah, young yeah, anymore. Right. He didn't even look that young in the original. Right. One. There's a couple times in this that the CGI is not that great. Yeah, I agree. Um, and... I didn't know why it needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even the real cool kill with like the critic, you know, being smeared across. Yeah. It just looked too doll like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and not very realistic. And I, certain things like that kind of bugged me. Yeah. 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 I so, wish they had, uh, we say this about a lot of movies, but I wish they had kept everything practical because yeah, they could have. They, they really very could easily have. could have. I still think that, you know, they carried the story well. Um, at the end of this movie, during the credits, though, this is the part that really got me. And I think that's weird. But mm -hmm. at the end of it, because there's a, a theme of paper dolls through the entire movie that was part of the reenactments or whatever, yeah. um, the more historical reenactments. And they're just very rough cut. You can see the hand moving them, the whole mm -hmm. thing. And it was supposed to be technically like, Billy, he made these when he was a kid, whatever. Um, but it shows the evolution of the different candy mans and how this continues to happen to people. Right. And it's going to continue forever and ever. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. That is really sad. But they did a really good job of it. Yeah. Um, we did watch the alternate ending last night. And... Um, I think that they could have left it in. Yeah. I think it was really good. Yeah. But I liked how they used the paper dolls and just left it at that and just yeah. explained everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That alternate ending was interesting. I noticed something, and I don't know if you noticed this at all, but it looked to me like in that, she's, Brianna's in that gallery showing Anthony's paintings, mm -hmm. but there was one painting in there that had, was like a red background. Mm -hmm. And to me, it looked like her father's painting. Well, and that's possible because, remember, it was discussed between her and her brother of selling the paintings mm -hmm. or whatever. And she originally said, I don't want to see his paintings. Right. I don't want anything to do with it. But I think with how the story ended for her, I think it was probably, a, it changed her mind. Yeah. That this does need to be told um, because both Anthony and her father were driven mad yeah. by painting you know, or by their artwork. All in all, I think both movies are really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they did the continuance quite smoothly. I agree. 
Um, it wasn't stupid like those two sequels that they did that were pointless <laughs> and should just disappear. <laughs> you can rent the original Candyman on Amazon. And then the, the newest one is also on Amazon, but Amazon's decided to you know, make us pay right. so pay we don't have we ads. Don't commercials, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Or you could just go buy the Blu-ray, which is also pretty inexpensive now and has amazing features to watch. It This thing broke down oh, yeah. this movie so well. And it I am a huge, huge fan of behind the scenes, explanations, all of that stuff. And they picked apart this movie in all of its aspects mm-hmm. um, from the actual practical effects, the makeup portion of it, which I thought was fantastic. And yep. that, this is thanks to Jordan Peele being such a huge horror fan. Yeah. Um, to the composer, who is very interesting. Yeah, I'd love to hear more of his work. Yes. Sure. I was like, whoa. Well, yeah, he who definitely. Is this guy? He seems like he falls into the noise category. Mm. And um, he definitely so much pays tribute to Philip Glass's right. music, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Um, they they just discuss every detail. It, oh, and the paper dolls. There's just a mm. segment on that. Yeah. Um, like I said, the deleted scenes, which I'm usually not a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. I usually don't watch them more than one time. These were so good. They were good. Yeah. And it, I was kind of disappointed they weren't in there. Mm-hmm. I think the only one that didn't really matter was the high school one. Right. But the rest of them, I'm like, these are fantastic. Mm-hmm. And the alternate ending was not dumb. Yeah. No, I liked it. Yeah, I it really it. could have been left in there. And yeah, they could have done it was like a post credit scene or something, you know? Yeah. I can never recommend the original movie enough to folks. Um, you know, as we discussed, it's pretty gory mm-hmm. and very realistic. And I give it two thumbs up for that reason. Oh, yeah. It's not Freddy cutting off fingers and they're green <laughs> yeah, blood right, or right. anything like that. Yeah. You know, it's real. Mm-hmm. It's, it's juicy. Yeah. It's a juicy steak happening yeah, it there. Is. It is. So, anyway, tell us what you think about them. Let yeah. us know. I mean, did you love these movies? Did you watch these movies? Are you going to watch these movies? I don't know. We Do you not give a flying fig about <laughs> these movies? What is it? You right. know? Anyway, also, we would appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, share, all of the above. Um, it does help us. Yes. Uh, we would like to know more of what you like and we want suggestions. We want everything. Yeah, absolutely. So, and we're going to continue to do this weekly as long as you like it. Yeah. If you don't, (laughs) well, you're SOL. (laughs) Anyway, see you next week. Bye. Bye.